Hello, did you know that God has put you together in an amazing way and you are unique? The Bible talks of you as a masterpiece. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says, For we are God's handiwork. Some translations say masterpiece, work of art. It's a Greek word poema where we get our word poem from. Can you see the beauty of that imagery? You are a poem from God. Psalm 139 says that he wove you together. He was dreaming of you before you were even made. And he's written a book with your name on it, with all his plans and purposes for you. So we're looking at how God has made you unique, beautiful, amazing, intricate, special. And we looked last time at the passions that God has put within you. You may be surprised to think that God put passion within us. Sometimes we get a wrong idea and we think that passion is not of God, but actually passion comes from God. The word enthusiasm comes from the word in and theos, meaning God, in God. Passion and enthusiasm comes from God. And now we're looking at the next letter of the word poema, O, which stands for opportunities. God has put opportunities in your life and around you. There was a time when Moses, the great man of God, first was called into ministry. He was 80 years old. He had been wandering in the desert with uh, a, a cloud over his head because he'd committed murder for 40 years looking after sheep. And he saw a burning bush. He turned aside. He went and he looked at the burning bush and God spoke to him and gave him a, a job and a mission and an affirmation and said, I'm going to help you. I'm going to be with you. But Moses was reticent and he thought he was not up to the job. And so in Exodus chapter four, it says, Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And he said, a rod, a stick. You see, Moses had been using a stick as he'd been looking after his sheep, and it was just a dry, dead old piece of wood, just rubbish that he'd picked up off the floor. But God said, what is that in your hand? And when he presented it to God, when he made himself available to God and whatever he had in his hand available to God, God turned the stick into a miraculous thing. And God said, you will do wonders with the stick. And then in verse 20, then Moses took his wife, his sons and set them on a donkey and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And this is the stick with which he did miracles. He parted the Red Sea. All the plagues happened. He defeated the Amalekites. He hit the rock and water came out. The rod of God was what he just had in his hand, but he made it available to God. I want to say to you, my dear friend, God has put opportunities in your hand and you may not realize it, but as we come to God and as we give him what we have and as we open our eyes to the opportunities around us, God uses them for greatness. Now, what has God put in your hand? Let me start with a few questions. The first thing is, what do you have within you? Perhaps you have a lot of time on your hands. That could be an opportunity. You have time to do things for the Lord. You have time to pray, to research, to talk to people, whatever it is. Maybe time is one of your opportunities, one of the things you have in your hand. Maybe it's resources. Maybe you have certain things that you can use for the Lord. Um, maybe it's money. Maybe it's possessions, uh, opportunities regarding resources. It might even be connections and relationships. You know, you have relationships with people that are unique to you and you can network with people. Perhaps you have a friend or you are part of a, a club or, or some kind of relationship link that you have, which will open doors of opportunities for you. The next thing we look at when we're talking about opportunities is to look around us. And one of the things we can look at is we can say, what are the needs in the world around me right now? There are always needs and we sometimes look at needs and we think that's a bad thing. But often a need is an opportunity where God can do something great. 
Do you remember the story of David and Goliath? David was the youngest son of Jesse, and he had been anointed by the prophet to be the next king, but he was exiled in a field looking after sheep. He was obscure and unknown, and he was just worshiping the Lord with his musical instrument, fighting off the odd bear or animal that would try to hurt his sheep, but he was in obscurity. And he went to his brothers who were on the front line of, of the army, and there was this giant Goliath taunting the Israelites, and everybody in the nation was afraid of him. They were demoralized, and they were shrinking back. And David suddenly saw a need, and he saw a crisis, but he saw it as an opportunity for God to do something great. And that was the thing that propelled him from being a shepherd boy to being the king. And I want to say to you that sometimes the needs or the chaos or the crisis around you are an opportunity. Einstein said, in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. And Paul, when he was in Corinth, when he was writing to Corinth, he said in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. You know, sometimes we mistake opportunities because they look like chaos, they look like adversaries, they look like problems. Uh, the great Thomas Edison said, opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work. Sometimes it looks like work, sometimes it looks like Goliath, sometimes it looks like a crisis or chaos. But I want to tell you that a need in the world around you is an opportunity for God to do something great. Is there hunger? Is there panic? Is there fear? Is there sadness, grief, uh, lack, injustice, um, a lack of knowledge? Whatever it is around you, that could be an opportunity. And when our passions link up with the opportunities in the world around us, suddenly we see God starting to work. When Moses was called, the opportunity was a need. His people, the Israelites, were in bondage and slavery in Egypt, and that was an opportunity for God to work. So we've said, look within you at the resources that you have. Look around you at the opportunities that may exist, and sometimes they are needs and crises. But also, look for open doors, opportunities of favor. You know, sometimes God will give you favor. People will say to you, why don't you come and do this? Or if you ask them, they will say yes. Sometimes we're too afraid to ask because we assume we know what the answer will be. But you could ask, you could go to someone and say, could we have a Christian meeting in your building? Or could I please speak to this group for God or for something else? And it may even be not a particularly spiritual thing, but God wants you to start a business or start a hobby or do something for him. And often we just need to have the boldness to step out and ask. Leonard Ravenhill said, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. And I just want to say that sometimes opportunities have a limited time span. And we need to realize that. You know, we are living in a time in history that is unique. We have openness to the gospel and to do various things. There's freedom of speech, freedom of religion, uh, many, many opportunities around us. And we need to take these opportunities because they may not last forever. There are several times in the Bible where it says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Today is the day of salvation. There is this idea that there are certain times which are opportunities. Kairos moments, the Bible talks about them, where we need to take an opportunity and use it. And I want to encourage you, don't be slow, don't be reluctant, don't be reticent. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. We're not even guaranteed we'll still be alive tomorrow. But if we are, we need to be using what God has given us. So these are the opportunities that God has given us. In 1 Chronicles 12 and verse 9, verse 32, it speaks about the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times. 
And I want to say to you, you'd be wise to look around you. Say, what are the things I can do that my parents and grandparents couldn't do? What are the things I can do that people in other countries can't do? What are the things I can do that I couldn't do when I was younger or that I won't be able to do when I'm older? And why are we looking at these opportunities? Because God says, look for these open doors. Paul says, an open door has been given to me and there are many adversaries. We've got to look for the opportunities. And as our passion and the opportunities link up, we start to do great things for God. Can I just mention one other point on this idea of opportunities? And that is that in a church environment, there are many opportunities, but also there are people who will help you to develop your abilities and to lead you and guide you into opportunities. We're not really intended by God to do things on our own. We're intended to be in a family with other believers around us and with leaders who are guiding us and watching over us. In Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12, it talks about leaders who are gifted, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And it says that their job is to equip the saints. That means all of the people in their church to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And they have the ability not only to train us, but also to see within us gifts and callings from God. And then they see the opportunities in the church and in the world. And they guide us through teaching, through relationship, through praying for us and through helping us. And so a church is a great way to link up with people and to find opportunities. The other thing is you may say, I have a passion to do uh, flute playing for, for God. But in your particular church, there isn't an opportunity for that because there's somebody else doing it. That doesn't mean you mustn't explore your passion. It just means that our passions get guided by the opportunities that are, that are in front of us at this time. So we've spoken about our passions and now our opportunities. Can I encourage you to do what Moses did? Moses turned aside to the burning bush. He took off his shoes and he worshiped God when God said, this is a holy place. He listened to God. He gave God what was in his hand and he allowed God to empower and send him out. Can I encourage you to say, God, what are the opportunities that you've put before me? And now, Lord, I am available. You may say like Moses, I'm not able, but you can say I am available and God gives the ability to you to do what he's called you to do. Find out what your opportunities are and this will guide you into knowing how God has called you and the good works that he has prepared in advance for you to do at this time. The next part of our poema course is the letter E and it stands for experience. Experience. You know that you have been through things that nobody else has been through. Your experiences are unique to you. Nobody else in the world has been through exactly what you've been through and God wants to take your experience and use it in several ways. The first way is that you have learned skills and abilities, maybe through formal training, maybe just through the school of hard knocks, you have learned skills that God can use for his glory. Every skill that you've learned is important and nothing is wasted. God wants to use the skills that you have learned. Secondly, you have been through difficulties which equip you to help other people. You know, you have a 100% record of getting through the difficulties that have been presented to you so far. 100% because you're still here today. And God has helped you. You may not have even realized it, but God was with you, watching over you, helping you, guiding you and protecting you through that. And God wants to use all of those experiences for his glory. There's a beautiful verse in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. When we are called according to his purpose, when we love him, when we say, God, I give my life to you, he works all things together for good. 
That means even the bad things that happen to you. That means all the good things that happen to you. That also means all the bad things you've done. If we give them to the Lord and we ask his forgiveness and dedicate our lives to him, he works all of these things together into a beautiful tapestry. You could say a poem, poema for him. And he uses all of your experiences for good. So what have you been through, my dear friend? What have you learnt? In our Poema course on our website, you can look at poema.page, you can see the questionnaire that we've asked you. And, and under the experiences questionnaire, we ask you, what skills and experiences have you learnt? What have you been successful in in the past? What negative experiences in your past make you able to help others? And what are the passions and opportunities for which you need more experience and training? And I'll come on to that in a moment. But let me just give you one more piece of, of God's wisdom from 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 and 4 regarding the negative experiences. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. He says he's the God of all comfort. We go to him with our pain, with those traumas from the past, with those negative experiences. Maybe it's even our own guilt of the way we have failed. We give it all to God and he's the God of all comfort. He's not only able to comfort and heal and, and mend those broken emotions and memories and help us to receive forgiveness for our own sins and to forgive others, but he's then able to use us as an instrument to help others who are going through the same things that we have been through. My friend, whatever you've been through is not wasted. If you'll put it in God's hands, he will use it for his glory. The comfort that you received he will then help you to comfort others. And so I must ask you, what are the experiences that you have been through? Go through the questionnaire, write down what you, what you think you've learned from, and then we put it in context. We say, my passions may be such and such. There may be certain things that I love, that I'm excited about, that I'm drawn to. My opportunities in the world around me and in my own resources are these. But then we say, my experiences help me because they guide me. I may be experienced in this more than that. Often our passions and our opportunities and our experiences are all linked. I've heard of many, many people who've been through a trauma in their lives and it causes them to have a passion to help others. They also see those opportunities in front of them because God opens doors for them and their experience equips them to help other people. But what about those of us who are not yet experienced? You may say, I have a passion for something and I can see a need and an opportunity, but I don't know how to do this thing yet. And I want to say to you that there is a definite place for us to admit when we need to learn and then to link ourselves with people who can train us. The church is the perfect place for this. You know, sometimes we think of church just as a spiritual place where for an hour or two on a Sunday, we learn about spiritual things. But it's not that. It's a body of people who are all living normal everyday lives, but who are supposed to link up with each other and help each other to develop our abilities and our experiences. God has put leaders in the church who can equip you and guide you and teach you and draw things out of you and, and show you the way forward. But we need to admit that I need to learn. And one of the best ways of doing that is to find someone who is doing what I want to do and apprentice with them, to learn from them, to walk alongside them and ask them for help. Mark chapter 4 verse 28, Jesus said, For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. There is such a clear principle in the Bible of growth and development. 
when Paul is writing to Timothy in the book of First Timothy, and he says, when you're choosing elders and deacons, make sure they're not recent converts, because experience is part of our qualification to do things for the Lord. Does that mean that I can't do something for the Lord? No, it doesn't. It just means I must be patient and learn the process through time, through study, and through helping other people. And it's an unfortunate thing that often in the world today, we think if I have a passion and if there is an opportunity, uh, I must just do it. I must just run headlong in and do it. But there is a need for oversight and for us to learn the process through time. You know, uh, Abraham was called by God and given a promise, but it was 25 years later, at least, before the promise came true. Joseph was given a dream of the great things God would do, but there was at least 12 years, many of those in prison, before the dream came true. Moses, 40 years wandering around in the desert before the calling was realized. And every single other person in the Bible is the same. David was anointed as king, but it took many years before he was actually king. And even Jesus only started his ministry at the age of 30. And even then he had 40 days in the wilderness. There was a preparation time. We need that. Paul the Apostle was called by God and it was 14 years later before he went into ministry. And I want to say to you, my dear friend, it's good to have passion. It's good to have opportunities. It's good to have a calling. But when we're looking at our poema, we need to realize there are some things that I need to gain experience in. So how do we put all this together? We are saying that you are God's handiwork, his poema, his poem, his work of art. He's designed you. He dreamed of you before you were made. He wrote in a book all his plans for you, and he's put you together in such a way the, the verse in Ephesians says that we are created as his handiwork to do good works and he's prepared the good works in advance for us to do. He's made you wired in a certain way. He's guided you through experiences and he's prepared good things, opportunities for you to have. I just want to address one thing here. While we're talking about opportunities and experience, many people say I'm disqualified. I have messed up. I, I can't do what God has called me to do because I have failed and, and I, I just, I'm so far off track. If God had written a book of his plans for me, I'm so far out of his plan that it, there's no way for me to get back. And I want to say to you that just as Moses said, Lord, I can't do this for you. Moses had committed murder and he'd been wandering for years in the wilderness. Every single person in the Bible who was used by God felt inadequate and had failures in their past. But God is a God of redemption. He takes us from point X instead of point A to B. He takes us from point X where we've got ourselves to. And he says, now I'm making this the new point A. And now we've got a new plan A, which will still be my good, pleasing and perfect plan for you because I can work all things together for good to those who love me, to those who are called according to my purposes. And I must ask you and give you the opportunity now, my friend, to give your life to God, to put all the, the mistakes, but also all the successes, everything of the past and all the tragedies that have happened, put them in God's hands and say, God, please, would you weave your beautiful tapestry? Would you work all things together for good? so that I can get back into the plan that you have for me. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for making me the way you have. Thank you that I am special and unique. Thank you, Lord, also for giving me opportunities around me and all the experiences that I've been through in my past. But Lord, I realize I need to give these to you. I need to put myself in your hands, and I do that today. Please, Lord, would you forgive me? Would you help me to forgive those who've hurt me? And Lord, would you use all of these things that you've put in my life and weave them together and use me for your glory? Give me the boldness to step out and do things for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Friends, look at our website, leadinglightsnetwork.com. There is the Poema course. There is so many other resources, and we would love to link up with you. God bless you. Jesus said that two or three people gathered in his name can be a church. It does not have to be a large building with professional staff. Leading Lights Network exists to help you do extraordinary things for God. Gather a few people in your home and use the free Leading Lights resources to help you disciple and reach your friends for Jesus. We have sermons and teachings, practical advice and the stories project that will help you communicate the gospel in story form. We also have a prayer team and experienced church leaders who want to stand with you and develop your potential in Christ. We would love to partner with you to see God's kingdom come in your area of the world. Visit leadinglightsnetwork.com or download the Leading Lights app from any app store. Everything that is alive grows. God made it that way. If you have the life of God in you, it will cause you to develop and grow, and you'll be involved in helping others grow. Leading Lights Network is here to help you grow as a disciple of Jesus, and to help others become growing disciples. We have Bible school courses, weekly featured videos, testimonies from church leaders, and much, much more. We are also available to form relationships with you as you develop in God's plan and calling for your life. Visit leadinglightsnetwork.com, link with us on social media, or download the Leading Lights app from any app store. We would love to partner with you to see God's kingdom come in your area of the world.